Uh, I'm not Garth. I mean, I am Garth. I'm not Brett. I'm confused. One of those, the other way around. Still not Brett. Uh, I am Garth. It, uh, um, if you want to ask me anything, um, Twitter's the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, if I'm talking about anything that's interesting to you, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Um, don't email me, because I won't answer you. Uh, guaranteed. Uh, still not Brett. So I, I'm new to PhoneGap Build. Technically, I started uh, Switch Teams on Monday. Uh, I have not gotten into the code base, so I have no idea about anything about PhoneGap Build. You probably know more than I do. I've used it, um, but as far as like future plans and stuff like that, talk to Dave. He'll tell you. So we're going to be doing something different. Um, but I also want to know what the original title means. So someday we'll find that out together for this presentation. So like Brian re mentioned before, uh, I've worked at Adobe for a few years, and before uh, PhoneGap Build, I've done a lot of stuff. Um, but the last thing that I did that I'm proud of is Top Coat. Um, before that, uh, I worked on Brackets. I was the first designer on Brackets. Uh, and then I was originally hired uh, from Adobe XD uh, to work on the, the default skins for Flex 4. That's kind of how I got hired by Adobe, uh, which was awesome, right? And the Flex Mobile, good skins. I don't know about performance, the rest of the stuff, but that looked good. <laughs> um, so this is, this is where I find myself uh, oftentimes. Uh, not necessarily that I'm perfect at all those areas, but this is where I, I feel happiest, is when I can find this intersection of all three of these things. Um, and I, I mean, I started out with design, and I moved to coding, um, kind of became a prototyper. Um, and that's what I was doing when I was doing the flex stuff, uh, and, and a little bit with the brackets. And then I worked with Brian and Christopher Joseph, and I learned how to do good open source, um, or do it correctly. And so I felt like I really grew as a developer in that point. Uh, and I think that's where a lot of phone gap developers and development lives. Um, very comfortable in open source worlds, very comfortable with the, the, the coding environments. Um, but this last one isn't really a thing. Uh, we don't really see a lot of designers doing open source. Uh, it was kind of a, a question, it was just kind of perplexing to me as to why it didn't happen. Um, a lot of designers could really benefit from the, the benefits of open source. And so I started talking uh, at conferences. I started going to design conferences and talking to them about the benefits of open source and how they could get involved. And we started a, a little organization called Design Open. And we're just collecting resources on how designers can do stuff in the open. Um, and th to be honest, there are some people who are out there doing it. Sean Martell from Firefox, he's the art director at Firefox. Um, he is amazing. He's right now working on a redesign of the Mozilla logo uh, branding. And so he actually is live he doesn't know how to, how to do it in the open. There's not a lot of people doing it. So he's just live streaming himself in Illustrator, working on the brand, and has an IRC chat for people to make comments on what he's doing while he's working on it, uh, which is super impressive. Um, so designers really could benefit from this open mentality. And I think um, the people in this room could help teach the designers that a little bit. Um, but as well, uh, open source could really benefit from design. Um, and this isn't necessarily to point out how terrible this design is, because it's not necessarily terrible. Uh, but it is complex. Open source has a lot of complex problems to solve, and that's what designers can help with. Uh, so, now applying this to PhoneGap. Why does PhoneGap need design? Um, I'd say, what, what, uh, to clarify as well, when I say design, I'm talking not just about making it look pretty, I'm talking about UX as well. So people who make things that are usable, uh, and also beautiful and enjoyable to use. Um, I think part of it uh, is this. For a long time with PhoneGap, I felt like the attitude was we're as good as native or we can do as good as native. Um, that's cool. It's not, an, it's not good enough, though. Um, I was at uh, All Things Open uh, just a couple days ago, and a Forrester researcher got up, and he was talking about um, apps and products that are built with uh, open source products. And he mentioned Untapped as his favorite social media application. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, it was you? Yeah. There you go. So, um, uh, and, I, and I loved it because it wasn't prefaced with, it's my favorite phone gap application. Or, it runs as good as native. Like, that wasn't part of the discussion. It is, this is my favorite social media <laughs> application. Uh, and I think part of it, when you look at the example of Untapped, is not only, it, it, one, it solves a real problem. Um, but it does so beautifully. It's enjoyable to use. And the performance isn't an issue. It's just, it works 
as well as it needs to, and so it's not like, I don't know, I don't feel like it gets called out. Um, so I, I think that's the goal, right? I think everything should be um, better design-wise than what it is, and more people will pick it up, because you run into this problem. Uh, this saying, don't judge a book by its cover, it's a bunch of bull, because what the alternative to that is, let's go read every single book before we can make our decision on whether we like it or not. The cover has to play into our judgment of, of, the, of the book. Um, and so it makes, if, I'm not saying that a good app can be, or uh, let's say, I'm not saying that ugly apps can't be good or average looking apps can't be good, because they can, but it makes it harder for your user to find them and it makes it harder for you to communicate that to people, the value of your application. So, so where do we get designers? Um, there's a problem with this. Uh, the really good designers know they're really good and there's not enough of them. And so they go work on projects that they want to work on that make them a ton of money or make them famous or that they are somehow vested in or interested in. So it's a little bit harder to be like, hey, I've got this brilliant idea that's mine and I love and someday will make us tons of money, I hope. Um, but I think you should buy into it and work on it as well. So, since there aren't enough, I'm gonna officially deputize all of you as junior designers. You are now officially deputized. Um, congratulations. I feel like you can move your tassel to the other side. Um, so what does this entitle you to do? Uh, you are now allowed to experiment with design. You're allowed to go take stuff, mess around with it, make stuff that's terrible, and rework it and move on from there. Uh, you no longer have to call your stuff developer art. You're allowed to say it's just design. You're allowed to say that. Or you can even say it's beta design. We're working on it. That's fine, too. Um, you're allowed to use Helvetica. I give you permission. Um, you can say stuff like, uh, hey, I would tighten up, I'd tighten up that kerning a little bit. Um, and you don't have to worry about follow-up questions because most people who talk about kerning don't know what it means either. So um, That's actually Sean Martell from Mozilla. He used that in his presentation the other day, so I stole it. Uh, I also give you permission to uh, steal, or sorry, go to Dribble and find inspiration uh, from other people's designs and use it in your work. Have you seen this before? This is awesome. So, so if you can't see that, it's Pablo Picasso's quote, and it's scratched out, and it says Banksy underneath it, <laughs> uh, which is fantastic. Um, and and this, this is totally what designers do. We don't talk about it, because again, we're not good about that whole open thing, right? We're not so good about like, oh, I forked it from here and I reworked it and I think it's a good standalone product. It is, uh, I was in the shower and this idea came to me, or while I was walking around the MoMA, I was inspired by, no, it's a bunch of bull, right? They, they <laughs> go on to dribble and find stuff that they like. Um, now, to, to just the caveat with this is you have to be, if you're going to be doing this inspirational manipulation, you have to be different enough so that when the original designer does something stupid and like takes the whole brand and down with him, that your brand is not associated with that original designer anymore, right? You want to be separate. Uh, so you've got to be different enough. So I have 20 minutes in this presentation and we're down to 10, so here's your crash course. Um, I can't actually teach you anything about design in this amount of time, nothing useful. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you four things uh, to remember um, that will totally help you out if you want to improve the design standard in your industry. Uh, first is don't stay discouraged. It would be stupid to say don't get discouraged because that's impossible. You're going to get discouraged, um, but you can't stay discouraged. You have to like use that anger and get pissed off and let it fuel your design into new directions. So don't stay discouraged. Um, don't be stuck by paralyzing perfectionism. Ship it, right? Don't worry that your stuff doesn't look as good as what's on Dribble. Um, just, just do the best you can with what you have right now. Uh, but that being said, don't stay at the current level that you're at. So ship what you can today but don't be satisfied with the current quality. You gotta improve what you, what you have. Um, and finally, it's totally doable. There's something that is very much, designers oftentimes kind of put on the air that it is a hard thing to get into design. Um, it's not. It takes time and it takes experience and it takes work just like anything else, but it's not magic and it's not mysterious 
like work. It is totally doable, totally approachable, and you guys should be a part of it. So, thank you. I've got like five minutes. If you guys have any questions. If you don't, that's fine. Yeah. Why did I go to coding? Uh, I think, I, I, so I go and when I've been speaking to designers about the importance of, of open source, um, I've been encouraging them to code. Now all designers have heard that they should code. In fact, they have guilt heaped upon them on a, on a constant basis if they don't know how to code already. Um, but the main, the main goal is uh, to best design for your medium, you need to fully understand the medium that you're working in. Uh, so you need to learn how to code. Now, I, I wouldn't say that when I first started coding that I did production level code um, or production quality. I've gotten a lot better in a lot of the things that I do. Um, and I started out for the wrong reasons. I started out because I got sick of um, developers telling me things were impossible to do. So I got pissed off and I just went and showed them that I could do it. Now, that's the wrong reason to go into it. But again, use the anger. Let it fuel you. Yeah. <laughs> I totally need to get like the metallic badge ones, right? Like you get when you go as a kid to visit the. Yeah, yeah. You are a junior designer. Yeah. Yeah. So th there's nothing wrong with imitating the, the native look and feel of stuff um, or trying to imitate somebody else's. But again, you can't ever be okay with where you currently are. You have to be thinking, how could this get better? I recommend as well to anything that you could learn from, from designer or the design industry is the importance of user research. Going out and spending time with your users, using your application, find out what problems you're solving and, and which ones you can do better. Um, but yeah, you, you want to be, if you are imitating, you still want to be different enough because you're not solving the same problems that that other person is doing. Design isn't just a visual layer slapped on top that you can apply across things. That's a problem that we have internally at Adobe is like, why don't we just get one UI framework that will apply to all of our applications and we just apply it all and we're all solved. But the problem is, is that we're all solving different, different problems and so the same UI is not going to work for everybody. Um, so you have to figure out what is the problem you're trying to solve and what's the best UI, what's the best design for that problem. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. In the best what? Water boy. Oh, you, you can do it. Yeah. There you go. That's all I got. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot, Garth.